Hey folks, welcome back. We are doing some recording tonight, uh, checking out the uh, brand new SM91. I've got Corvus along for uh, first details and uh, to fly alongside him while he talks us through the characteristics of the plane and his impressions of it. Uh, I will sidekick today, probably in the P-51, but I may jump around to a couple of other planes as well. But uh, first, Corvus, say hi, and uh, why don't you uh, tell us uh, tell us the how you do this for those who may be first-time listeners. So, yeah, uh, uh, thank you, number one, for having me on. Uh, and I will explain that, uh, that most folks who watch this already know how I do this. But for the new folks... I go out and I buy the certificates. I cert out the plane. Now, in this particular plane, there's an additional step. I have to go and I actually either have to win or buy crates. I went out and I won a crate, and the first crate that I won uh, dropped the operation order. So for some folks, that doesn't happen. Right. So usually if you buy the, the crates if you buy two crates, the first one of the first two crates will drop that operation order. If you win them, sometimes it takes a few crates. And so don't don't be discouraged if it doesn't drop in the first crate you win, because that does sometimes happen. I was gonna say um, that's that's actually I've already had a conversation with someone tonight who is six crates in and still does not have the operation order. Oof, that um, hurts. And that I'm, hurts. I'm hearing they may not be the only one. So uh, just if you've got feedback, if, uh, folks who are watching this, if you'd put in the comments below kind of where you're at and how quickly you got one, if you've gotten one yet, uh, let us know that. Anyway, go ahead. So the crate the crates are a, a thousand gold a piece, and so man, if Wargaming didn't drop the op order in one of those crates, I'd kind of be mad. You know, that, that's a pretty freaking spendy crate right. uh, to, get a, to get an op order. Okay, and so anyway, uh, cert out the plane, use tokens to specialize it, uh, and then throw the best equipment that I have lying around. Usually I just go to my uh, depot and um, go and grab whatever is the best materials I have for a particular plane. Uh, if I'm really feeling uh, try hardish, I will go out and pirate the best equipment I have from some other plane. <laughs> yeah, whatever you okay. can scrounge. <laughs> uh, in general, I look at the, at, at, at the plane's hard stats and I try to judge, hey, how do I make this plane fit a little better into my play style? Or what what is a part of the plane that that kind of needs shoring up, or is there an outstanding part of the plane I can really I can really buff to make this thing, you know, this is how this particular plane will shine. And for this particular plane, I looked at it and I gave it my I gave it my heavy fighter uh, default build, which is 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 a speed build. That that's first thing I did is I gave it a speed build. That makes sense on um, first glance at the statistics. So, and so I have a I, I have my speed build works kind of like, hey, there's a gun sight, polished skin, uh, uh, boost, uh, the the boost equipment, right? Uh, what do you call it in this particular in in period two? I think it's a, a boost mixture control or something like that. Yep. And boost, boost engine boost mixture injection system. <laughs> oh well, that's a that's not a mouthful at all. But thank you for the control uh, is the consumable. That's that's what we're yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes. So that was my first one, and I took it up. Uh, oh, by the way, and then I fly it for a few battles and see how it feels. And so right. the first my first battle, it was like uh, you know it's it's okay, but it doesn't feel quite right. It needs. It needs a little more agility, and it didn't have quite enough agility. Yeah, yeah. The controllability so, is a little low. The 360 time is very low, so that makes sense. Yeah. Right, and and, and it's it, so for those folks who are heavy fighter people, and I'm one of those folks. Um, you get used to this kind of play style. Uh, everybody who's come up has had to play the, let's say, the German ME410, right. which is, you know, it. it it turns like a luxury liner, um, uh, but it has the benefit of being fast and having great guns. 
but you learn to uh, figure out how you're going to use your turn uh, to uh, put yourself on target. Right. Well, <clears throat> yes, you can play other planes like this, but if you don't have to, it's nice to have a little bit more agility. And so I was deciding how I was going to do this, and I decided to keep the polished skin because I wanted I, I wanted the perks that come with polished skin. Right. And so I threw on a lightweight power unit to offset the yaw uh, losses that you get with polished skin. Right. I figure, you know, a little faster, I get a little better climb, uh, get a little better acceleration out of the thing. And that, that felt uh, like, in my mind, that felt like the right thing to do. Right. And so the second battle I had, uh, I had that set of, you know, uh, gun sight um, and polished skin and lightweight power unit. And the plane felt much better. It felt much more natural to fly. And I did better in it. Right. Then I decided, you know, before my, my first go around with the, with the guns was um, because it has two gun slots. So this is unusual. It has two gun slots, and there's only, I think, one other heavy fighter that has two gun slots. Well, and that's not the, the only uh, unusual thing about the equipment slots on this plane. Oh, th and that's true. It's got five instead of four. Normally, uh, Tier 7 stuff has four equipment slots, yeah. and this guy's got five. Yep. And so, and, and so that, that meant that we could, we could do a little something. And, and I couldn't decide what to do with the guns. It's like... Hey, you know, uh, 20 mil, those 20 millimeters have decent range. Uh, natively, they have uh, max range is about 780. Uh, the functional max range is about 650. Uh, just, just from my experience, uh, it really does better when you get inside 600 meters. Uh, and when you get inside 500 meters, it, good night. All right, that's, that, that's the way it was. And I had uh, gas-operated action. Okay. And uh, and long gun barrels because I even though the rain I wanted to get a little further out. Yeah. And the reason there was a reason for that. The reason is that I knew that I would come up against BF one hundred nine K sixes. Yeah. And their gun range is pretty short because the M the MK one hundred eights are kind of short ranged guys, and so if I'm going to be going ahead on, I want to evaporate that guy before he even before he can even sniff gun range to me because otherwise i'm dead yeah. uh this this particular plane's a little bit delicate a, a little bit delicate uh uh even you know even for a heavy fighter it's a little bit delicate right and so i i want to i want to maximize my uh gun on target and minimize my taking shells in the face yeah that makes so, a lot of sense yeah uh, again it was okay I felt that I wasn't actually using that extra range that I got. Okay. And it was kind of griping me a little bit too, because it, it felt like it wasn't, the, the burst length wasn't quite good enough. The burst length is natively relatively long. Yeah, eight and, seconds. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah and, and that's that's pretty good, and it felt good. But it felt like it needed a little bit more. So, I decided to try hard and I put on experimental gas operated action and experimental reinforced bolt carriers. Right. And so, and so now, uh, let's just say uh, when I go to my stats page, my burst length is now plus 25 and my rate of fire is plus 20%. Okay. So, uh let's just say that the uh the results were eye popping in my third game okay uh that the, well in the second in the second game too but it, so the so now we're going to have to talk a little bit about the downside of the plane these are these are all upsides because man this thing is a gun platform like you would not believe right it is it is really good and the guns are fantastic. Um, I I was very impressed by what the guns could do after I changed out the long gun barrels. Uh, okay. I was I, I mean, and I'm going to tell you right now that it's not even as good as it can be, 
because I haven't upgraded all this equipment to ultimate yet. It's still right. sitting on, on advanced. Right. So I'm, I'm really impressed by this plane already. And it's not, it's not fully ready to rock. And so, and this is with the, you know, with the, with the five point pilot and the five point gunner, um, that you get along the way, uh, along your, um, uh, uh, along the grind. Right. That's what that's what it is. So you get a five point pilot and a five point gunner inside um, the missions for the SM yeah, ninety one. Yes. You mean okay? Yeah. And so already that was it's all great. Now all I have to do is get just one tier seven battle because all the battles I flew were tier eight. Right. And the first two battles I flew were. Uh, tier eight versus P sixty one and B twenty nine. So uh, you could guess how those turned out. Yeah. And you, e even even though I came out uh, top of the team on both of those guys, uh, top of the team doesn't mean much when a uh, when P sixty one and a B twenty nine are in the air together and yeah. uh, hard to and, impact and wins and losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a consolation prize. Right. Um, but from the from the very first flight that I was flying this thing, I was I was stupid impressed by the by the guns and the gun handling. So I, I'm not going to pretend to be the best uh, aimer in the whole world. Uh, in fact, I I do have trouble sometimes uh, getting my guns to hit, even even my machine guns. <laughs> right. That's that's how I am. Uh, but these guns really impressed the heck out of me. And so if you're a person that loves the boom and zoom style right. and likes uh, those rocking guns, this plane is for you, even though you get bottom tier. Right. So to give you an idea of how good the guns are, uh, in my third game, I was up against an IL-20, a specialized IL-20. And I came down from above and at about 650 meters, I, I slammed on the brakes and, uh, and let loose. And that plane went from full health to exploded in that one burst. Mm. So, so that's an IL-20, folks. That's, that's, not, uh, that's not any screwing around for hit points. Yeah. Um, shooting down B-32s, child's play. Yeah. Um, I did get to take a great big old lump out of a B-29. Of course, I didn't take care of it because this plane is uh, this plane is fairly delicate. But it was a pretty big lump. I yeah. felt uh, I felt reasonable about uh, the trade-off there. Right. So, um, I uh, I took down uh, in both of the games with the P-61s. I took down those guys twice each. Right. So there's enough guns on this thing so that you can escape the uh, uh, turret fire from the uh, from the P-61s. Uh, conversely, don't expect any turret help from this plane right. because the cone of fire is tiny. Um, what, six degrees of elevation? Something like that? It's It's dumb. Yeah, it's I, actually I, a, a pop-up turret, sort of, uh, historically, right? Like, it comes out of the fuselage, so it, you've got a very yes. limited... It's not like a ball turret or anything back there. Right. It's uh, it, it, it Maybe it discourages a low-health bot, but you're not... It, it, so, in my estimation, you, you might as well not even have the thing. Yeah, so, it, it looks like something off of a G.I. Joe toy when I, when I yes. look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that, that's about right. <laughs> Um, is it worth $60? Okay, that's a... So if you were to go to the, the premium shop and buy certificates for it, the premium shop is uh, selling for uh, for 220 of them for 60 bucks. All right, that's a, that's a squinty number. Um, yep. A Tier 7 plane, even, even a, for a heavy fighter guy like myself, a Tier 7 heavy fighter... I'm a little squinty about 60 bucks, right. but it's pretty good plane. And if you were to, let's say, do some of the, uh, some of the chain of missions and then cert the rest of them, maybe get away with some lesser number of certs. And I would say that would be probably a fairly decent deal. Um, mm. 
as uh, 60 bucks, I'm, I, like I said, I'm kind of squinty. Uh, but I am going to absolutely positively grind this thing in my free to play account. Okay. There is no doubt about the fact that I'm grinding this guy because the missions aren't that tough. They're, okay. they're reasonable. I haven't taken uh, an in-depth look at them, but hopefully it's, you know, not things like five trade kills and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it seemed to me when I did it, when I did an overview of them, they were grindy, but doable. It's not, it's not one of those things where you're going to knock yourself out. Uh, you know, like, like the Christmas ones kind of turn out to be right. The Christmas right. ones usually turn out to be kind of, you know, super duper grindy. But then on the other end of them, you get stuff like the P61. So, you know, that's, uh, it, so th there's an argument. There's an argument that, that 60 bucks is too much, but the missions aren't really so super grindy that you're going to be tearing your hair out. Right. Uh, the epic medals that you need to get are reasonable to get like you need to get an akamatsu and you need to get a mcguire and these aren't these aren't super difficult to get you know you need to do a rocketeer uh achievement you know th those kinds of things yeah especially uh, with the right plane that those become a little easier so uh i believe a do little is, a, is another one of them right. uh which is which is not super hard in in any um any of the the higher tier bombers so uh, so yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a plane that, that I, I really enjoy playing, uh, even though I've only played it four times, uh, all bottom tier, 50% win rate. And those two early games, I'm kind of, I'm kind of squinty about because it's, you know, uh, P61, B29, man, sometimes when you're playing tier nine and you get that on the other side, that, that could be a, that could be sometimes a stretch too. It so, can be problematic. Well, let's uh, uh, yeah. let's jump into the first battle and um, and uh, let's uh, put it through its paces. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say, and we'll talk about this as we go. Um, but my recommendation to people is going to be not to buy it, and I'm, I'm going to talk about why a little bit later. But uh, as we go through, I want to ask you some questions that I had about the plane, kind of as I looked over the statistics and uh, kind of did my initial assessment without having it. And uh, the first question I had about it was, is it fast enough? Uh, it's slow for a heavy fighter. Um, you're dealing with light fighters as your counter. The, you know, there's a, a lot of those out there that can be good. You know, the K6 is one of them, but obviously I'm flying the P51. That's another one. There's quite a few light fighters at tier seven uh, that can chase it down, it seems like, on paper. Um, and so I just kind of wonder, do, do you feel like it's fast enough at this point? You know, I uh, I didn't seem to have any problem getting away from light fighters and uh, and multi rolls. Uh, the only aircraft that gave me any hassle whatsoever uh, were the tier eight planes. Uh, the tier seven planes did not seem to uh, give me any trouble. Now, is that because I played it like a heavy fighter and did my best to uh, get my licks in first and get out. Probably, um, that's probably part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, that that's the <clears throat> that's really the issue. Is is the the plane? You look at those hard stats, right? And when I play the plane, it doesn't feel like those are the limiting factor, right? So it's kind of like the TU one in a way. You know, the TU-1, you look at the hard stats and you go, Psst, really? Um, but then you go and play it, and it can do all kinds of stuff that the that the hard stats don't suggest. Well, but that's that's my comp for this. I mean, the reality is, you know, the TU-1 is also very slow. It, it can be chased down pretty easily, right? So that's kind of what I was curious. It's one of those, let's say, at least say this, you know, and because it's also vulnerable to other heavies that are faster than it even at yes. tier seven. Yep, so, yep. you know, you have to play it well as a heavy fighter. You, you cannot, um, cannot dink around <laughs> when I, you're playing. I, 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 I agree with you. I, I did also, I was um, careful. Uh, all bot battle, by the way. Yeah, I just um, noticed that. That's wild that we have this many players on and we just got an all bot battle. That's, um, it, it is strange. And this actually is my very first 
uh, top tier battle in this plane. So, <laughs> so that's uh, it, it's something, I guess. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. So I try to I try to hold my fire until I'm well uh, well within uh, gun range. Yeah, yeah, and, that makes sense. And and I uh, I took out that P thirty eight like nobody's business. I mean, it just the hit points just evaporated on the thing. Um, and that's what happens when you get within, like I said, it's got to be approximately 650 meters. Uh, 600 meters is better. So, um, uh, one of those Ooh. battles, by the way, I, I spun in the middle right. uh, at, a, at an airbase and held the airbase with this thing. So, what does that tell you? I don't know if it tells you anything, but it, it tells you that the that the plane can do good work. Yep. All right. Here's the there's a bot B seventeen that's doing all kinds of uh, crazy uh, crazy aerobatics. <laughs> of course. I love just, it. Just I like B seventeen should. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I got taken so, down by a bot uh, P fifty one locked onto me. I'm going to go see if I can help on this garrison over here. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of uh, one of the questions I had was that. Second one is boost time. What are we, what are we looking at with it? Uh, it kind of relates uh, to the speed a little bit. If I remember correctly, it's something, it's 25 or 28 or something like that. And I, I run boost in a can as well, so I can. So now I'm, I, I goofed and I, I, uh, I'm wearing a... Uh, Wearing some uh, uh, fighter or another. Oh, it was a heavy fighter because I was talking and wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. That is the danger of recording. Uh, uh, these things but do happen. I'm not really worried too much about that because it is an all bot battle and we got plenty of time to come back. Um, the. Uh, Oh, um, yeah. So the engine, uh, the engine heals itself pretty quickly when you get a when you get a crit. So my engine got critted, and I was slowed down. But um, I believe it's it's 28 seconds or 25 seconds on the boost. And I would have to uh, I would have to look again. Right. All right. What are we doing here? Uh, but in a dive, I regularly get uh, regularly get up over 800 kilometers per hour, so uh, that's that's speedy enough in my estimation for a uh, for a tier seven heavy fighter. Yeah, I mean that's pretty good dive speed. You're 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 comp, uh, comping with tier seven light fighters at that speed, right? Right. And so I'm <clears throat> it for whatever reason this plane. The, whatever the hard stats say, the soft stats, there's got to be something in the soft stats that's making up for this. Uh, making up for the what the hard stats s pretend to say. Um, and I wish, uh, I wish I had a little bit more access. Oops. Well, I mean, the, yeah, it's hard to, hard to see some of those things. Um... And, and many of the ones just they're not even not even it's not that they're not published it's it's that you, it's hard to even dig them out of the um you know the oh, I get this one instead it's hard to dig them out of the database right um people right. have tried and not been able to uh so sorry about that i uh i got zapped by a uh, yak nine oh from, yeah yeah those are... from distance you you've uh you know about that that's more the, than uh, once that's the the bot uh, the bot welcomes. Yes, indeed. Um, so you've also got a change of nations on this thing, which you're probably going to want to use at least until you unlock your some extra point uh, Italian pilots, unless you've just been a huge uh, Reggiano uh, archer uh, kind of uh, aficionado, right, with the other Italian plane. I, I would suggest that yes, if you're if you're uh, if you really want. Uh, to get the most out of this plane, you probably want some pilot skills, some good pilot skills, and uh, really the only way to do that is to is to change um, is to change nations. I I'm not going to. I uh, I, I really want my uh, 
spaghetti macaroni uh, 91 to be Italian forever and ever. So, <laughs> so that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to do it. That's a, I heard that particular, uh, that particular moniker given on discord and I said that I was going to steal it. So oh, I, I like am. it. Uh, I think yeah. um, I, I would be tempted to put it maybe as, as a British if I were going to change the nations because we don't have uh, anything other than the bow five at this point. Um, and the other one might be Japanese as well. Uh, those might, might, might be both uh, good possibilities for it if you don't want to keep it as Italian. They, uh, an argument could be made for American, so you could put a lease Clark in it and give it a little mm -hmm. bit more agility. Uh, you know, give it a speed build and then give it some agility. You know, a lot of agility. Yeah. So that's... Uh, so, you know, uh, casually flying around, yapping my flap, uh yeah uh it, you know ten thousand points without even without even breaking a sweat yeah not bad so uh, you know i i realize it's an all bot battle but but still you know that's uh well, all bot battles well, tend to you tend to have a lower point score because they they go so fast <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, yes. that's not entirely uh you know crazy uh let me. I just got my first crate, so let's uh, let's just see if I get an operation order uh, in this uh, operation spaghetti macaroni spaghetti marinara. I don't know. We, there's lots of S's and M's you could use there. Let's see if I get an operation order out of this one while we're while we're here. So yes, yeah, so this is a family yep. channel, so you want to watch out for the S and M. Uh, uh, comparisons oh okay so. well i i got a this is interesting i got uh experimental period three experimental long barrels along with my operation order oh uh, and some turret I, ammunition so that's uh I'm that's lucky. not too bad so so you you got a you got in your first crate you got the operation order and some people have been waiting until six or more crates yep and so um my argument to persia or or wargaming de depending on who's making this call right um there should be a counter and there should be a maximum number of crates you get before you actually get the thing right i, I realize that there there should be some there should be some randomness in it yes but you know if if someone is diligently trying to get crates and and uh, they is is there a need know. for the randomness though? I mean, the, realistically, uh, is there really a need for the randomness? Does it does it well, really okay, benefit yeah, I, anyone to have it? Shouldn't it, shouldn't it always drop from the first opening with a hundred percent chance? Because we know they can uh, do that. We we've seen it in some of the other create dynamics, right? So I I would uh, I would agree with you. I I'd set the I'd set the chance to a hundred percent on on the first on the first crate. Um, that's the way I would do it, uh, but. But Wargaming would like you to buy. And so I think there's some behind-the-scenes RNG fiddling, which is why I get it on the first crate every time I buy one. And sometimes people don't get them on the first crate every time they win them. Right. So, it uh, again, the, there's an argument, and there's a business argument to be made. And so, I, I, I mean, I get it, but... It's so, like, hey guys, I already spent money on the certificates. Uh, you're going to make me wait till six or eight crates in before I can actually uh, cert out the thing. Yeah, uh, come on, let's uh, <clears throat> let's think about this a little bit. Or somebody's going to have to spend a whole week trying to get crates. Is somebody, or, or or however long it takes. Well, yeah, I mean, it, but even then, with gold, a lot of people you can get gold from the unique crates every week. So you know. Sure. I mean, unless yes. you're buying them through the website for cash, it, um, you know, if, if that's the argument, it, you're right. It doesn't make sense to give it on first drop, even if you're paying with gold. Um, but, but speaking of the, you know, the, the marketing of this and, and the, the cash aspect and the money making aspect, uh, you know, on a scale of one to, to uh, ratty, how bad is it that we're currently selling the K6 uh, alongside this operation? Well, for thirty-five bucks or thirty-four bucks, that's uh, that is about the smokingest deal that that is possible, um, right? Because that plane is wicked, 
at tier seven. Yeah. So, and it's actually pretty damn nice at tier eight. So, I, I, I don't agree necessarily with the with, with how uh, Wargaming has decided to do this, uh, but I understand it because uh, hey, everybody now everybody's seen how it works. Let's get as many people as possible in this thing, and then we're going to um, maybe step on it a little so it's not so nasty, right? Yeah, I mean, because yeah. this is. A, uh, sort of you're, you're selling the counter to the thing you're trying to make money off of so i mean i guess you yeah. make money either way is the general idea but it doesn't seem to and maybe i'm maybe i'm underestimating the sm but it would seem to me that if you're going to spend some money right now in the game you wouldn't spend it on the sm you'd spend it on the k6 uh yeah no that i i agree with you uh as a heavy fighter guy i'm gonna i'm gonna lean toward the I, i'm gonna lean toward the the uh, heavy fighter uh, but the the K6 is just just absolutely a magnificent plane that you even a heavy fighter guy like me I, I have to have that right yep um, well and it, it and sort of is a little bit of a mini heavy <laughs> it, it is oops uh, I I was uh, I was talking with uh, F22 Hunter the other day. And he had commented that on on some of my uh, some of our recordings, uh, I say "oops." And uh, the, the interesting thing is that way back in the way back uh, before I said "oops," I uh, I said the thing that uh, is often the last thing that military pilots say uh, before they crash. Uh, it uh, begins with "s" and ends with "yeah." Anyway, uh, and, and my wife. Uh, objected to me uh, hollering that out. So now instead I say oops. oops. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's cool. Uh, I say wow uh, a lot, so I'm sure that shows up in the videos. Um, that's kind of my replacement tool word. So Yeah, I, I try not to um, I try not to curse and I try not to shout uh, because it uh, it annoys the, the pets. Right. <laughs> uh, also the family, but uh, but the pets run and hide, so that's that's never good. <laughs> um, but yes, so if you hear me say "oops," generally it's because I realize that I've made it. I've made an error. Something and, terrible has occurred. You're just sparing yes, us from the worst of your mistake. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <clears throat> mistakes were made, as uh, VBAT would say. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's uh, always oh, good. Uh, use the passive voice with that kind of stuff, right? Don't actually that's say right. I made a mistake. It's much that's right. better mistakes to say were made. Were made. <laughs> uh, so so yeah, uh, I, I agree with you that the that the that the K6 sale is a little bit mistimed, because wouldn't you rather have this uh, plane shining all alone? Uh, in the in the skies at at uh, tier seven and tier eight, and not uh, not be overshadowed by uh, uh, ghosts of uh, of Grind's past. I I don't know. That's that's the way I see it. I but. It, well, and I think um, I think it's it's uh, the K six for a reason, and I think it's it's done you know because you know the. You got to have the K6 there as part of the counter, and part of that is because you've got the first aircraft ever uh, to break a rule in the game. Because because the SM91 has more equipment slots than anything else at Tier 7, which is a huge issue for me. Um, then it had to be something powerful at Tier 7, or it wouldn't have made sense to buy it, right? Um, so sure. your your choices are buy the overpowered pay-to-win plane. Or by the overpowered pay-to-win plane, <laughs> and and that's uh, that's a problem. I think um, I don't uh, I don't agree with that. I think it's uh, very ratty, very dirty, um, and it bugs me a little bit. So, I and I agree with you. By the way, the uh, my boost length is uh, 28 seconds. Yeah, yeah. There you uh, go. The, and the boost the boost cooldown is a little it's a little slow. It's not P38 slow, but it's pretty slow, and so I'm not. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a super fan of the uh, of the boost length. Oops, I oh I didn't make a mistake. It was a uh, I, I thought I made a mistake, but I was mistaken. You didn't, <clears throat> you didn't oops it. 
I, I didn't. I, I thought I saw. I thought I saw a. Uh, uh, I was being tailed, and I was going to get my butt kicked. But real in reality, what happened was I was. Uh, I was just coincidentally headed in the same direction as a bomber. Oh, there you uh, go. that was that was behind me. That uh, should have known better. Um, yes. So. Uh, I, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the economy of the game. I think that that you and I agree that that it's probably not the greatest idea to have this plane uh, the way it is uh, as far as uh, as far as competing against the the K six. Well, um, and, and beyond that, what what uh, what possible reason could there be for introducing a plane with a fifth equipment slot when nothing else has it? Um, when that's not a characteristic of the regular planes that you can get for free in the game, um, you you are inviting solid arguments about play to w uh, pay to win when you do that, right? I, I agree, a and other than the fact. And this is this could be the counter argument that the soft stats of this plane or the hard stats of this plane uh, kind of suck. Well, yeah, and totally. So, but we've already said the soft stats more than make up for it. So, right, a and with help of the of the equipment slot, right? So if you didn't have double gun slot, the guns wouldn't be so damned impressive. Um, right, they would just be ordinarily impressive. <laughs> yes, Re regular uh, impressive. <laughs> that, and the gun, the guns for this plane really are that good. They really are, and and just me chatting here, I'm just go, you know, casually going around and shooting stuff. And uh, frankly, I've got no idea what my score is. Oh, well, yeah, it's not super good. awesome, but you know, um, but I really haven't been. Uh, I really haven't been doing the try hard thing you know it's right. it's just been me chatting uh about uh, about the plane and the uh, war gaming economy so so you were uh had said previously that you do not believe that this plane is worth is, is worth buying for 60 dollars. so yes. let's hear what you have to say so about that Here's what I would say. You, you have, let's say you do have $60 in your pocket and you want to buy. I mean, if you don't have $60 in your pocket and you don't want to buy, no problem. I mean, I, I especially if you agree that there's a pay to win aspect here. So I get that. Yes. But let's just yes, say yes. You're, you're in the mood to buy a premium. You've got $60 in your pocket. You, you, wanna, you wanna maybe jump in. Um, so here's your three options uh, over the next 30 days. Your, your three options are this. You can buy the SM91. You can buy the K6 at half price and arguably have a plane that's just as good. Or you can wait and buy the new premium American bomber that will be coming out at Christmas that by all, uh, you know, by all uh, appearances is going to be a, a US version of the RB-17, perhaps better than the RB-17 and with your max skill US bomber pilot that you've been grinding in your B-29 over and over and over again for the past couple of years. Right. So yes. I would say wait and buy the Mixmaster, which I'm also not happy about. That's that's a whole other story. Um, there, there's a real argument to be made that that's a dumb uh, release for the health of the game, much less anything else. Um, but but just from a purely mercenary, I want to spend money standpoint, I'm not sure the SM91 is in the top two of those three choices. I think it might be the third choice. <laughs> so I, I'm not a uh, pe people who know me know that I'm not really a bomber guy. I'm I've been fairly I've been fairly dismissive of bombers and uh the bomber kind of playstyle deal. Okay, okay. Uh but I am actually a little bit excited about the Mixmaster. And the reason is is because I do prefer if I'm going to play bomber, I do prefer the how would you say the active play style so the sit up high in the stratosphere and uh and press the space bar no that's 
boring as hell and I hate it. I do not want to play that play style. Sure. But the play style of, let's say, the mid-tier Soviet line, where it's a dive bomber style, it's a fast bomber style, it's, it's, more, uh, it, it's much more in line with tactical bombing than it is with strategic bombing, like you'd get with a B-29 or the, or heck, even the, even the EF-131 uh, or JU-287. Uh, those, are, those feel to me like more like strategic type bombers, where mm. you just go and I would say that the best pilots play them as tactical bombers, though. They, they fly yeah, them they, low and fast, right? Yeah, they, they do. I, I agree with that. Um, uh, it's sometimes hard to get away with on the, uh, on the North American server because uh, then you can, get, you can get intercepted by, by stuff like the Hunter. And you want to you watch out because the Hunter is actually, is actually pretty good. So you have to, you have to be careful. Mm. But, but yes. Having both the Su-10 and the EF-131, I, I agree with you that that they they can be played in both manners. Um, but I prefer I prefer the Soviet mid-tier play style, and the Mixmaster seems to be more of that style of of bomber than than the American line in general. And so, and I have you know good bomber pilot and good uh, gunner. And so it'll be fun, more fun to play that than in my B-29, which I absolutely hate to play. Uh, go out and get a Doolittle or a Lang or whatever, sure, whatever. Uh, but man, the thing's boring as hell to play. I just don't. So, so uh, that, is, uh, that is a discussion that I'm sure we're going to be having in about a month, uh, as, long as, uh, as long as you'll have me on again. Um, and I do want to ask uh, all your listeners, please like, uh, subscribe, share, if you will, and leave a comment. What do you think about, well, about this plane, number one, the, the, the Spaghetti Macaroni 91? Um, where would you put it in a nation? What nation would you give it to? Uh, how do you feel about this premium thing that, that Persia is doing? right now all those things are fair game for discussion yeah in my i opinion. would agree i would agree and i think they they do make for good discussion um and like i said i'll be surprised if the mix master is not a mechanical clone of the rb17 um it, it just it, it it's very much style wise when you look at the armaments of the plane and how the plane operates you know it, they're at least going to go for the style of that um, and it's just, it's going to be interesting to see, but that's why I say, you know, if, if you are involved, if you do like the tactical bombing, right. If you do like the active play style, and if you do have a, a really nice U S bomber crew, you might want to wait <laughs> now, if you have 120 bucks, maybe you buy both. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, now we're going to talk about a, a tier eight. So this uh, $60 is a lot for a tier seven and you can bet that certing out the the mix master is going to cost more, and I'm going to guess that it's going to be closer to eighty bucks. So so people keep that in mind when you're when you're buying. Uh, thirty three bucks or thirty four dollars for the for the K six is a no brainer. If you've got that if you've got that lying around, man, absolutely go and fetch that because that is that is uh, at least for World of War planes. If you're an active player and you want something to give you an edge that's money well spent um yeah i'm, I'm kind of i'm trying to remember now how much the um how much the moon bat was when you when you bought it um, oh it yeah it was, outright, right yeah it was expensive it was so um, I, I just looked it up it was a hundred dollars hundred dollars for the 600 candy pieces now that said it's much easier to grind candy out uh, and get half the certificates, say, than it is to do, you know, maybe something like this where you've got a lot of high high level missions or skill level missions, and then you got to get the crates to activate the order to begin with. You know, the candy pieces you can right. jam a bunch of candy pieces e into each day if you want to. Um, right, right. Because because of the nature of the grinding of them, uh, getting them uh, for their your daily missions means that that you don't even have to do anything epic. All you got to do is play. Right. Yeah, you got to play a lot, but but all you need to do is play. Right. So, so yeah, it's um, 
a hundred dollars for a bomber is uh makes me squint uh and the entire reason that i would spend the hundred dollars to begin with is to give everybody an idea of how this bomber plays and how it feels and what it compares to um and, and i haven't really done that with a with the sm91 because i feel it's sort of its own plane it's it's hard to it's really hard for me to compare it to the ever other heavy fighters at tier and the reason is is because the it it has its own feel it's uh not as graceful as the bf 109 z uh it's it doesn't have the the big chunk damage of the ki 93 um uh, the the incredible the incredible uh, close-in gun power of the XP-75, right? The uh, crazy derp, uh, uh, wild uh, guns of the KI-91-1 or the KI-91-I or whatever you want to call that. Oh, sorry, yeah. 94, KI-94. 94, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, statistically, you know, outside of maneuverability, it's closest to the XP-75. I mean, in terms of hit points and, um, and speed and climb rate and, and all of that, uh, that's where it sits closest. So, so yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's its own plane. Oh, and, and let me tell uh, the folks out there, I never once mounted the bombs on it because I wanted the speed. I didn't want to give up any speed, right. and uh, you know what are they? They're they're hundred kilogram. Are they hundred kilogram bombs? Or they're I, I can't remember if they're hundred pound or hundred kilogram bombs. On so the hundred ninety one. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's hundred kilogram. Okay, so two hundred and twenty pound bombs uh, at tier seven. Yeah, and they got a, a three minute or uh, sorry a ninety second reload time, uh, and that's eh. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I, yeah, no thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like it was worth it to me. It, it, Especially you know, not it, right it, now with as many players as we have in the skies, right? It, maybe in a, in a low, low player period, it's a little more casual feeling. You might, might chuck them on, but I, I'm not sure I would ever. So. Yeah. Oh boy. Yep. I made a giant mistake coming over here. That was a that was a big mistake. Well, they, I, uh, I tried to wing over and help you out, but unfortunately, I was not able to do so in time. Um, yeah, I, sh I, I shouldn't have gone that way. That was a, that was a mistake on my part. I apologize. Oh, you're not you're not hurting me any. It's uh, we're just here to play. <laughs> right. I, uh, I I try not to be the uh, I try not to be the potato. I, I try not to be. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, uh, that particular choice was, uh, uh, I think I was on gratin at that particular time. So. Well, I, uh, I checked and saw the, uh, the flight and the K6, and, um, I, I, I don't know Exocat very well, but I feel like he's a competent pilot if memory serves, so I was a little yes. nervous it, about that. So just think of it this way, I used you as bait, because uh, I killed him, so that's what that was. <laughs> well, uh... Glad to have uh, been able to uh, drag your opponent, because that's a, uh, that, uh, you know, best case scenario is I drag your opponent and uh, a and we both come out of it alive. That That's the best case scenario. Right, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, that, that worked out. I'm, uh... Oh, there, oh there's two of them. Oh, okay, this is going to be bad. I'm, I'm going to die here. More than likely. Okay, cool. Yep, I'm going to join die here. Join me in death. Uh, join me in death, my friend. Yep, That's, I'm uh... going to join you in death. It was 2v1 over here. I went ahead and clipped the uh, the Spitfire since he was low health. I considered him... Uh, I was only going to get one of them, I figured, so... I'll take the one that I could guarantee was going to kill. Oh, that was a mistake. I just blipped the screen for no reason. We're ahead, so just keep killing folks, and we'll be fine. Uh oh, Yak Nine U, don't do it! Don't do it! No worries. Uh oh, somebody's on my tail. Look out, everyone! Oh, 
All right, we're good. We're still oh. even. It's just uh, just a matter of keeping up on. Them. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of the zone because I believe that uh, K6s are on are in there. Yeah, there's uh, Exocats in the middle zone. He's being hunted yep. by a couple of our guys, and I'm headed towards him now. So. Uh... Ah, it's two two v one over here again, though. Unfortunately, it looks like. Yep, I just dove into the middle of that. That was a bad idea. So, All right, so this thing turns much, much better than an ME four ten. Let's put it like that. Yep. <clears throat> the poor, uh, the poor ME four ten pilot uh, is is going to be crying a little bit here in about a second. There we All go. All right. Well, uh, they did not see me coming apparently, so. Minus a couple of them. Goodness gracious. You're a, you, you are a stealthy guy, I gotta tell you. I'm very quiet. Uh, I get told that at the house, too, that I sneak up on people, and I'm like, I'm not even trying. I'm just here. Right, what do you got there? I'm gonna flip this zone. That's, that's what I've got. And I okay, see you're... a half-dead bomber over here. Oh, that's the player bomber, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a pass at him. And that'll be three more points. Hmm. Oh, watch there out. There we go. Try All not right. to, uh, yeah, this, uh, this particular mode is, is, is one of my favorites. Oh, it's um, my absolute favorite. Everybody knows that by now though. If anybody's watched the channel more than once. <laughs> it's, uh, and the, the reason that it's one of my favorites is because it feels the most like um 1.0 yes uh of all the of all the uh oops i did not uh i did not want to run into you so i decided to head the other direction oh now i'm now i'm baked no 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 i got you come I got, uh, I'm slide running. towards me if you can i'm gonna catch the uh, k6 first yep yeah. i'm almost there I'm almost having... there almost there I'm Stay wiggly. Alive. Keep twisting. Keep twisting. I'm, I'm wiggly. I'm, I'm guns on. I'm guns on. He's gone. Bingo. Thank you. I was. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm. I'm critted on both wings. <laughs> hey, the K6 is a good buy, folks. Remember. Uh, it is. Uh, you heard it. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, no, it's. Uh, uh, the it, if war gaming could uh, give us. This particular mode, more often, we would I would be very, be very happy. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. Well, um, and I've made the argument before. I'll make again here in case people haven't had it. This is this is all you need to do to bombers. You don't you don't have to nerf them. You don't have to play with anybody's stats. If you just give us this game mode, then bombers return to their natural state of assisting the game rather than winning the game single-handedly. Uh, right. And that's that's all you need to do. So. Yeah, actually, uh, all the cats is uh, is a pretty good player too. So, be careful. Uh, well, Exo Cat just managed to get my engine, which is going to prove to be a bad idea because that just made me that much more maneuverable. Ah. Oh. Other than uh, Tim O'Fay, oh, is that the 9U? I think that's, yeah, the 9U shot. Yeah, there. so he got sniped from halfway across the map. Well, course. he was close, actually. He was close. But you know, it's... I, I, I do know. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've felt the wrath of Tim O'Fay before. <laughs> so... Oh, there you go. Uh... So, yeah. Um, so, I, I, I need to fly with you more often. I seem to win more. Uh, when when I fly with you, so <laughs> I'm just getting the good luck bonus because I haven't been on in a little bit. My life has been a crazy, chaotic mess uh, the last month, so I'm just getting well, the hey, welcome to back to the game. And uh, oh, nothing bad, just uh, you know, we're here we're gonna we're gonna go easy on you, <laughs> let you shake off the rust. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> so this plane, even though it's even though it's uh, hard stats feel kind of meh, yeah, it makes up for it with the with the slots, the extra yeah. equipment slot. It makes it 
uh, having two gun um, slots, uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting experimental equipment in there. Yeah. And, man, it's almost like having really stupid, powerful machine guns because I can just hold down the trigger and just shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and knocking down bombers and knocking down uh, high hit point uh, ground attack aircraft is child's play. Yeah. It, yep. it, I don't know. It's it's easy and fun. Yeah. So uh, you know what what else can you what else can you say about that? Nothing. Um, I mean, uh, other than you know, I, it's it's still interesting to me. I just don't. I'm not sure why you wouldn't you know go ahead and make the plane a little better overall, and and take away that that fifth equipment slot. Right. Um, we know wargaming has a hard time figuring out how to balance aircraft as it is. Um, right. Kind of playing with fire here. It feels like, and you know, long term we'll see. I, I don't know. I don't feel like it's game busting or anything, but I don't like the precedent that a premium gets what regular planes don't. I don't like that precedent very much. So, um, especially yeah, when I, you know there's some really good planes at tier seven that could use a buff that are significantly underpowered, um, and uh, you know, throwing an extra equipment slot on them would help in a lot of ways. Um, and they haven't done that. So this is interesting. Maybe this is a test for that. At the most generous interpretation, this is a test to see if a fifth equipment slot will break something in the game. <laughs> And and we want to, as a as a sort of a large strategic view, we want to discourage wargaming from power creeping, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Tanks already has this problem, and planes sort of has this problem, and you're you're actually making the argument in advance that the mixmaster is potentially more tier eight power creep. It, and... I feel like it has to be. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because because it is a bomber, and there are a lot of people who don't play bombers at all, right? Right. So if yes. you want to sell it, it's got to have something that appeals even to the non-bomber player, which means it's got to be strong. Uh, you could get away with doing a not strong, you're a, an average strength bomber in, in the G4 earlier this year because it wasn't your primary Christmas buy my stuff time. But this is right. my primary buy my Christmas before the end of the year, keep my, my wallet full you know, as a company time. And so it's going to have to be strong. And that's a little scary for everyone should be at least a little worried right now. Um, uh, and I haven't looked uh, hard at the stats yet. They're up on game models, 3d.com. I may post a link in the description so people can go check it out. I haven't looked at that yet. Um, but, uh, but it's worth considering it's, it's worth, uh, worth checking out, I think. So I, I did give it a, I did give it a little look, uh, at, at game models, 3d and, uh, just by my eye, without actually making a comparison to any of the other bombers at tier, it felt like it was going to be fast and good altitude and uh, good bombs. So, uh, so your your uh, comparison to the RB17 is apt. Uh, it could even be a replacement for the RB17 playstyle. Um, and uh, catering to the uh, market with uh, uh, maybe wallets that are a little more full. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> and, and that that's a consideration. We know that Persia is not going to be doing any more, any more anything uh, with the Soviet lines at all. We know yeah. that already. Yeah, and this so, could be a way to move people away, right, from that. So. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm looking yep. now. It's uh, so the top speed is not quite the same as the RB17. Although again, we don't know equipment slots. But uh, just briefly, uh, oh, I need to take gear off. Probably let me uh, let me do that. Let's take all this off. Just briefly, and see what we got. So, so <laughs> yeah. So currently the Mixmaster is 150 kph higher on the cruise speed and 15 oh. kph lower on the uh, max speed, boost speed. Um, and Ooh. its climb rate is virtually identical. And okay. its optimal altitude is the same. Okay. And its turn rate is the same. And its roll rate is the same. 
So yeah, essentially outside of a little bit of playing with those, um, you know, top speed and cruise speed numbers, and arguably those are more dangerous numbers uh, to yes. have the have the top speed just a little lower and the cruise speed higher, and, uh, so, and dive speeds the same. So arguably it's going to be more dangerous than the RB17. Agreed, and and it, and it appears as though that that has uh, that has borne out your comment earlier that it was a if you'll uh, pardon the um, Italian theme, it's a copy pasta. Right? <laughs> so, I love it. You know, yes. Like, yeah, it I, is. I got I to gotta throw that in there. You know, <laughs> I, I fly in the spaghetti macaroni 91 and, uh, and, uh, and actually folks, it's better that I call it that because if I actually tried to pronounce the Italian, I would yeah. be, I would be wrong. I'd Did be wrong. it have an actual name assigned to it? Do we know? Um, yes, it, it does. And the actual name is like the Savoia Marchetti. No, no, no. I, I mean, like, a like an actual, like, you know, like the, oh, the, like uh, a... the 2002 is the arrow, right? Of the Sagittarius. Right. Did this one have it, anything? I, I don't think it did. Mm. I don't think it did. Mm. Um, I, I should I should have looked at it. I was not prepared. I was only prepared <laughs> to discuss the aircraft and not its history. So well, they are I don't see game, anything is... just briefly glancing at Wikipedia, obviously not the best of sources, but just to see if right. there was anything, <laughs> um, um, not there. So who knows? Well, so, should we, uh, should we do something fun? Usually when we do these, we round it out with something different and fun. Um, what are absolutely. you thinking? I, I try not to, I leave that to you. Well, goodness. What, um, Hmm. I haven't I, uh, received I, any requests lately, so I don't have anything in particular. I don't think that um, has come up. Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I know with that. With, with that, it's like um, you know, three hundred and eighty-seven uh, uh, channels, and nothing's on, right? So, <laughs> so kind of yeah. Sometimes it feels that way. <laughs> So, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm, uh, I'll fly, I'll, I'll pretty much fly anything. Uh, if there's something that you've been itching to fly, I'll try to fly something complimentary to you. Um, you know what I haven't done in a while that is just, just jumped out and grabbed me. Do you have a JL one a, I do. That might be fun. All right. Let me grab that guy. Um, I was going to say, I've, uh, you know, the, the crazy thing is, is I've got them all except for the, uh, LA nine RD. Okay. And you're not missing oh, anything with that one. <laughs> um, the, uh, let me, let me get a pilot in this guy. I'll just, while you're putting the pilot in them, I'll just tell people the reason you're not missing anything is the LA9RD was built, created, put in the game by Wargaming to be a replacement for the Yak3RD, which was considered to be too weak. And the LA9RD is actually weaker than the Yak3RD. So they completely missed the uh, target window with that one. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, the... Uh... The I-260 is another one that I don't have. Yeah. And I, and I know this one's going to make you very sad. The uh, Falcon Wolf 190A8. Oh, oh, I know, sadness. I know. I mean, I, I get it. I let you down. Believe me, I, I get I've... it. No, I do. It's it's not a great plane. I, I'm the first to admit that. Um, it's just the premium Falcon Wolf, right? So you can't... Right. Uh, I, I wish we would get... You know, I really do a, a fighter version of the Focke Wolf uh, in in premium format. Um, I would I would prefer that at some point. <laughs> yeah, Nova, rather than Nova mixed Tempest, masters. <laughs> right. That the Nova Nova Tempest and I discussed that, and the one that I thought would be great would be to have the Tier Four have a prototype. One of the prototypes have it be a Tier Four fighter. Um, uh, give it uh, give it its uh, historical uh, abilities, like maneuverability abilities, and give it some, you know, maybe not the greatest of guns, 
give it enough guns to make it okay to use, to make it a choice, but uh, but give it its maneuverability and its and its speed, uh, so that it's it's something that you would you go to tier four and you go, huh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna fly the the fighter version of the Falcon Wolf today. So <laughs> I have a different something, idea. Something like that. I would say since uh, this air combat game and the other large popular air combat game often do the same aircraft, which is the case with the SM-91. We are putting it in and it's already in the other game. Same with the MB-5, some of the others. Uh, that putting in the D-13 at mm, probably tier 6 or tier 7 uh, would be all sorts of fun. Uh, that's a, a D variant that only has three 20 millimeters. Um, and so then you could... Uh, You'd have some interesting differences, right? And you could do it as the fighter version. So that would be my two cents. I, I like it, I because I like the Dora. I one of the things I like about the Dora, uh, the D, the, at least the D nine that's in the game, is how, how graceful it looks. Yeah. Um, and then with those guns, it's a brutish kind of graceful. Well, and you've already uh, got you've already got the AA eights as a premium, right? So you, you're then doing something a little different, at least in terms of um, you know um, kind of how you're handling things, right? You got a little, little bit of appeal. Um, and, and and the the uh, I will say that the ME two hundred nine A at tier eight with the three twenty millimeter cannons is a formidable opponent. So having the same sort of thing. Um. At, uh, at tier seven. Oofed, that hurt. Did you get rocked I by no something? I no Oh my gosh! Something just absolutely kicked my butt. It like knocked off most of my hit points. Oh lord! I don't, I, I, uh, I, don't I needed know a warm up match with this because I'm I'm gonna be in the same. I feel like I'm gonna be in the same spot in a second here. You got three. No, that can't be it. But yeah, he knocked out knocked out my engine. I mean, it literally knocked off 75% of my hit points with one shot. There's an Yak-9 you over here, so. Well, that might have been might have been part of my problem. <laughs> well, hey, look, it's like... an LA-9RD. <laughs> I wonder if I should engage him. I absolutely think you should engage him. All right, I'm going to go do something different because I, 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 I did it wrong before, so now I'm going to go do something different. Speaking of RB-17s, there's one over here. I didn't realize we had a player RB-17. Wow, we... Oh, you had the you had the same idea I did. I don't know what this guy's doing. Oh, oh I'm gonna ram him. Oh, don't ram. <laughs> do not run into bombers, folks. Right. Not, not a healthy way to to do things. It's uh, it, it it really is bad for your health. Worse than smoking, really. Yep. Yay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I uh, yeah. No, you're right. Uh getting a warm-up game in this. So for the folks out there that don't know, uh the JL1 oh, oh, no. Wait a minute. JL137A is that what it's I can never remember the name of the stupid thing. Yeah, it's, it's um, uh, I want to say JLA but it's JL1A. Yeah. Yes, JL1A. It, it's it's the MiG-9 at tier 8. Um, oh, we're going to cap a zone somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we're about to get the command center back. Yeah, and, I'm, I'm well, headed, I think I'm uh, headed Red direction. Arrow was the name of the... I, I did a video on this, but it's been a while. But I think it was the Red Arrow was the actual Chinese name for it. So, there you go. Hmm. Goodness gracious, how are you doing that? Like, 
getting my butt kicked by by something from distance. Okay. Well, this is not. Uh... Okay. Oh, you're uh, you're after that guy. I'm just after somebody to flip this zone because it needs to be done. There we go. Yep, you did it. Well, actually, I think uh, Hercules did. All right, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go over here. See if I can't do something. Going in the middle is suicide, so I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, don't don't uh, draw them out. This is although this is attrition. This is the same strategy as any other map, which is don't go in the middle. The problem is the bots will go in the middle unhesitatingly. They will kill themselves right. in no. droves, right, uh, with their low intelligence. Yes. Uh, uh, much like uh, uh, some players. Yes, they'll just keep throwing yeah. themselves against the airfield over and over again, hoping for the yeah. best. And 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 not actually oh, obtaining it. I'm, there's a heavy fighter over here that's that's uh, that's playing. Oh, it's a it's a, the XF5U. So the pancake has come over here to kill our. What do you call it? It was a, a ground attack aircraft. Uh, one of the J7s? We had a J7 on our team earlier. Uh, no, it was a, uh, it was a, what do you call it? Goodness gracious. I could not get my uh, 37 to hit. It just uh, refused see, to this hit. This is, uh, yet again, I will uh, push for the side button on my mouse is the 23s. So at, at 700 yep. meters, I open with the 23s, and then I just save the uh, save the 37 for last. No, you're you're wise. It's it, you you've made a better choice when you do it that way. Uh, me, uh, I, I made poor choices. Uh, goofed. Oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm closing on the pancake. They just flipped to this AA zone, but. Uh... Yes, it's uh, uh <laughs> where am I going? He came down low to get me and the J7 ate him up. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it wrong. This is uh This is this is part of the problem with playing this plane. It's a guns uh, trying to get the guns to work is not um is not easy. When you get them to work, it is a wicked good plane. But when you can't get them to work, it's like, oh, why did I bother? Uh, oh, you weren't. Sorry, you were him. Were you up here too? Thing. I didn't even. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. I'm always preaching. Check your mini map every 10 seconds, and that time I didn't do it. No, nope, I was I was headed in that direction. I shouldn't have been. That's good, so that's uh, my mistake. My apologies. No apologies ever needed. It's a fun game. We're just here for chill times. Exactly. Uh, all right. So we get four points for every kill. We only need uh, six kills. We're right. About to get one uh, of them. So. And not let them have any. That's well, I don't, I, that might be unrealistic with bots involved in the equation, but... Yes. Right. This LA-9RD not... has been on me all match. It's very disturbing. It, uh, I, mean, I, I it, feel it, bad for him. You, you, shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't have spoken poorly of the LA-9RD. I guess so. Uh, he heard me. Got him. I'll, nope. Uh, I uh, I gave him I gave him the business, but I didn't give him enough of the business. But I'll go I'll, I'll go back and uh, see if I can't. Ha ha! Try that on for size, buddy. Oh! He put the uh, he put the fire out with uh, with uh, two hit points left. No. My least favorite kind of uh, recovery. There we go. 
go. Shazam. Well, I, you know, once I remembered the side button split, I did better with the guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, and, and thank you for carrying me. I uh, I really do need to play this plane more often. It's so. Uh, do you have the MiG fifteen yet? Did did we discuss this? Um, I think I finished the MiG nine. I have not bought the MiG fifteen, but with the sales, obviously that's something that's going to happen. I was waiting for birthday to come around to be able to do some of that. I think the tens are on sale. Are they not? I I think so. Yes. And so, so, uh, I enjoyed the MiG nine. Um, I felt that it's a that it's a a very good uh, boom and zoom fighter, energy fighter at tier nine. And then you get the MiG fifteen, and wow, right? It, okay, it carries the same guns over. In fact, the same guns as we're playing right now. Um, but the airframe that those guys get attached to is absolutely phenomenal. It is so fast and it turns pretty good. Yeah. And the altitude is magnificent. Yep. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's one of those things where th this is a great plane to go and practice using the guns Yeah. because tier eight's a little slower than tier 10 yep. and, and tier nine, as it turns out. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you can go out and you can practice how do these guns feel because it's the same, it's the same sort of setup where the, the 37 is mounted low. And so you have to aim up a little bit. You have to put your uh, pepper just slightly above the target. Plus the, you know, the, the 37 uh, has a reasonably short range and the cool down or the, the, the gun overheat cycle is horrendous. On the on the 37, which is why you have them split. Yep. That, that's that very smart, uh, and of course uh, Corvus is not smart, so he hasn't done that. Well, so I'm to, pretty sure to... the I think the tier eights are the same. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So the, the tier eights uh, are the, the same. So it's it, uh, the the 23s are the same. Excuse me. So yeah. the 37 is a different 37, but the 23s are the same. So that's part of why it's also great practice is, is to do that. So, uh, so, so the range on these uh, 23s is 800 meters. And on this 37, it's 620. Yeah, but slightly the, less, it, yeah. It, now, that 620 is, um, let's say, optimistic. Yeah. You really do need to get like within 500 meters before oh, yeah, you're, yeah, you're doing uh, doing any kind of real damage with the 37. Yep. Uh, and even the 23s, the 23s are good, but you need to kind of need to be in it within 700 meters. I usually start within anything. 700 on the 23s, and then around five. If I if I'm cognizant enough, yeah, within 500, I start chopping the 37. I think it's a three yeah. second overheat time on the 37, something like that. But, I, uh, I, yeah. I I I. I believe that that is true, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna have to you make you're gonna make me go over and see the MiG-15. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't bought it yet, but none of the tech tree aircraft are on sale apparently. It's just the premiums. Oh. Uh, well, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. So I, sadly, uh, I, I I am a I'm a when I got the the MiG-15, I the the MiG-9 kind of made me a little bit mad because it was. Uh, it wasn't quite good enough in my estimation. It was good, but not good enough. You know, when you compare it against the P uh, 1092, sure, right? Sure. Um, but here I am sitting on the uh, on the um, Mig 15. The uh, the range on the 37 is 640 meters. Yep. And on the 23s is 800. So it's similar. Uh, not the same, but similar. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah. So uh, and the the recommendation of, for for folks who know is uh, reinforce reinforce bolt carrier to increase the burst length. Mm. Um, and uh, and for mine the the burst length is uh, is uh, plus twenty uh, percent. Yeah. Yep. So. Which uh, is so. three point six seconds. So you get a little little extra out of it. So that's, uh, I mean, and that can be the difference between you uh, uh, getting the job done and not getting the job done. Because when the 37 hits, it hits. Right. 
So yeah, sometimes so, you just yeah. want that one extra pop uh, to make yep. it work for you. So yep. Well, good stuff, uh, Corvus. Thank you for being along for the ride tonight. Thank you all of people out there in YouTube land who've been patient as I have not posted many videos. Um, hopefully that can change in the next couple of weeks. And um, but good stuff. And of course, Corvus will have to do this again when the mix master comes along, and uh, we'll just have to play in general between now and then, uh, and uh, just uh, get some games in as I get my uh, schedule back on track. Sounds great. Anytime, buddy. I'm uh, I'm I'm happy to play with you, uh, recording or not. Happy to play with you uh, a anytime, any anytime. If you see me on, hit me up. We'll go out and and uh, and see how much trouble we can cause. That sounds good to me. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being along for the ride tonight, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one again. Let us know what you think about uh, the mechanics, the sales, um, you know, the five equipment slots, the K6 being on sale, the Mixmaster coming up. Uh, in the comments below and uh, we'll catch you on the next one until then good luck and good hunting